In this example, we have the integral of 3x squared plus 7x minus 2 divided by x to the third minus x squared minus 2x, which is the rational function. First question, is this a proper or improper? The answer is proper because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Next, we factor the denominator completely. as x multiplied by x squared minus x minus 2 and factor one more time to get x times x minus 2 times x plus 1. With respect to x, as we see all of them, they are linear. Linear factor of the power 1, power 1, power 1. That means we're going to have three partial fractions. The first one with the denominator x, second one with the denominator x minus 2, the third one with the denominator x plus 1, dx, and we're going to find the undetermined coefficient, which is the a, b, and c. On the side, from the original expression, 3x squared plus 7x minus 2 divided by x times x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals the a over x plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x plus 1. We write the denominator as a common denominator or x times x minus 2 times x plus 1. We have to multiply a with x minus 2 times x plus 1. Multiply b by x and x plus 1 and multiply c by x and x minus 2. That means the numerator of the left expression is the same as the numerator of the right expression. So 3x squared plus 7x minus 2 equals a times x minus 2 times x plus 1 plus b times x times x plus 1 plus c times x times x minus 2. Now we're gonna replace the x with the number that easy to find the value a, b, and c. The first number, let x be zero. If x is zero, the left expression is negative two. The right expression will make the product involving the a becomes negative two times a, or a equals one. As you see, for the group involving b and c, the product will be zero because it has a factor x in there. Next, pick the number that convenient to find the rest of the numbers. For example, if x equals negative one, for x equals negative one, the left hand side becomes three minus seven minus two. The right hand side, the expression for the a will be zero. The expression for the b will be zero as well. So we have the value negative one times negative three times C, which is three C, or C equals, this size negative four minus two, that's negative six. So C is negative, uh, C is negative two. Next, we pick another number, my X equals positive two. For X equals positive two, the left-hand side, we get 12, plus 14 minus two equals, the expression for the A will be gone. Leave the term of the B because C will be gone as well. So B times two times three, which is six B. That give us C, uh, B equals the value four. And bring A, B, and C back into the integration. For the partial fraction A over X, now it becomes one over X for B, over x minus 2, we have 4 over x minus 2. For the c, going to be negative 2 over x plus 1. And next, find the partial, find the antiderivative of each partial fraction. The first, the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log absolute value of x. The second partial fraction, the antiderivative would be 4 multiplied by natural log of x minus 2. The last one would be negative two 
natural log absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. Another example, we have the integral of 4x to the third plus 4x to the second plus 3 all divided by x squared minus 1. Is this a proper fraction? The answer is no, because the numerator has degree higher than the degree of the denominator. Now we are going to use the long division to make it as a proper fraction. So starting with x squared minus x outside and then inside here is 4 x to the third plus 4 x to the second plus 3. x squared goes to 4 x to the third 4 times x and then multiply 4 x back to the x squared minus x to get 4 x to the third minus 4 x to the second and then subtract it out from the 4 x to the third plus 4 x to the second. The first term will be gone Next, we have 4x squared. We have 4x squared minus negative 4x squared. That becomes 8x squared. Bring down the number 3. Next, x squared goes to 8x squared x 8 times, so plus 8. And multiply 8 back to these two terms to get 8x squared minus 8x. Subtract it out from the upper expression or subtract it from 8x squared plus 3. 8x squared, 8x squared reduce or cancel. Now we have 8x plus 3. 8x plus 3, x to the first power. The power is less than x squared now. Next, we will write it into the, the quotient. 4x plus 8 plus the remainder, which is 8x plus 3 divided by x squared minus x dx. The fraction form here is now in the proper fraction form. Next, use the partial fraction technique, but the 4x plus 8 is easy to find the antiderivative now, nothing to do with that at this step. For the fraction 8x plus 3, the denominator factor completely to be x multiplied by x minus 1 with respect to x. This fraction can be right as a sum of the two partial fractions. The first one with the denominator x second one with the denominator x minus 1, and find the undetermined coefficient, which is a and b, with respect to x. And on the side notes here, 8x plus 3 divided by x times x minus 1 equals the a over x plus b over x minus 1. Make it as the same denominator or common denominator x times x minus 1. So the numerator is a times x minus 1 plus b times x equals 8x plus 3 divided by the same denominator. That means the numerator on the left, 8x plus 3, equals the numerator on the right expression. We're going to find a and b. First, let x be 0. If x is 0, the left-hand side, the value is 3 equals the right hand side, which is negative times a, or we get a equals negative 3. For x equals 1, the left hand side is going to be 8 plus 3 equals the right hand side is b, or b equals 11. And then our integrand becomes 4x plus 8 plus negative 3 divided by x plus 11 over x minus 1 with respect to x. And now we can find the antiderivative of each term. The first term will give us 2x squared. Second term will be 8x. The third term will be negative 3 multiplied by natural log absolute value of x. And the last term 
would be 11 times natural log of x minus 1 plus the constant of integration c.